The whole thing in Star Wars was to take ideas, psychological ideas, from social issues, political issues, uh, spiritual issues, and condense them down into a, a, an easy to tell story of those stories. When writing a story, it's impossible to entirely remove it from the context it's written in. No story exists in a vacuum. The experiences of the writer, the social climate and current events will always find their way onto the page. This may not even be intentional, but rather finding its way into the story through osmosis alone. Sometimes its influence can be more overt, such as the case with Fight Club's critique of consumerist culture, and sometimes it can be more subtle, seen in Halloween's reflection of suburban paranoia. But sometimes, a film's allegorical nature can fade into the background, being easily forgotten amongst the explosions, special effects, and fast-paced action. This is the case for Star Wars. Well, no. Nothing in this world pops into your head fully formed. It's an accumulation of all the things you've seen, and then when you go to regurgitate it into a, your own thing, you take all the best parts. In 2012, a book insightfully called Star Wars and History released. From ancient Rome to the Vietnam War, the book explores how real figures and real events shaped what we see on the screen. So what I do is I say, I want something, I want a costume that is very regal, uh, very grand, very different from anything we see, but has a lot of cultural history behind it. So I don't want to make something up, I want to use something that is from a, a living human culture. I love history. So while the psychological basis of Star Wars is mythological, the political and social basis are historical. This is what George Lucas said in 2005 when asked about his inspiration for the different societies we see in Star Wars. Perhaps the most obvious example of this is the Empire. It's no secret that Nazi Germany provided the basis of the look and feel of the Galactic Empire, with the fanatic elite forces sharing the name of paramilitary fighters active in 1920s Germany. The uniforms worn by officers of the Empire bear a striking resemblance to those worn by members of the German army in the Second World War. However, while there's certainly a visual resemblance to Nazi Germany, this is largely where the similarities start and end. Instead, George Lucas drew upon a much more contemporary inspiration when originally writing the film. In 1981, when asked if Palpatine used to be a Jedi, he responded by saying no, he was a politician. Richard Nixon was his name. He subverted the Senate and finally took over and became an Imperial guy and he was really evil, but he pretended to be a really nice guy. It's clear George Lucas had strong opinions surrounding current events and politics when Star Wars was being made. He was a college student in the 60s, after all. That came naturally to him. In school, I was of the, I don't know, angry young man. Student. Sure, you were a so, rebel. Uh, I come out of anthropology, so my focus is social systems. Star Wars was written in a time when it was impossible to ignore what was going on in the news. After the civil rights movement, the Vietnam War and Watergate, the myth of American exceptionalism had ended. People were becoming increasingly sympathetic to the underdog. So when a story about a plucky band of rebels fighting against an oppressive, technologically advanced empire hit the screens, it was no wonder it was so successful. If you've been following this channel, then you'd know pretty much every other video I end up talking about the Vietnam War. But once again, we can see how its impact on society has permeated into pop culture. Star Wars released when the conflict was still very much in the public consciousness. After all, America only left the war four years earlier. In fact, George Lucas was originally slated to direct Apocalypse Now, which would have seen him tackle the Vietnam War in a much more overt way. But after Francis Ford Coppola took the reins, Lucas had to channel this inspiration indirectly, writing Star Wars as an allegory for the conflict, rather than a straight up adaptation. The good guys are the rebels. They're using asymmetric warfare against a highly organized empire. I think we call those guys terrorists today. We call them Mujahideen, we call them Al-Qaeda. When I did it, they were Viet Cong. But the empire isn't the only system of government on display in Star Wars. Before that, there was a system dominated by a Senate. There was a Republic, there was democracy. That's right, we're talking about the prequels. While the original trilogy may have borrowed largely from modern history, when Lucas came back to the franchise for round two, he looked to the ancient world for inspiration. The architecture on Naboo mirrors that of Imperial Rome. Even the pod racing in A Phantom Menace is reminiscent of a Roman chariot race. 
The transition from the Galactic Republic to the Galactic Empire bears many similarities to the fall of the Roman Republic. Robert Keane writes in Star Wars and History that it's plain that the basic structure of Lucas's history derives from the fall of the Roman Republic and the subsequent establishment of a monarchy. Both events feature a drawn out civil war which eventually led to a strong man declaring himself emperor in order to maintain stability and end the chaos. In order to ensure the security and continuing stability, the Republic will be reorganized into the first galactic the prequel trilogy also delved much deeper into the code of the Jedi, revealing their philosophy, ethos, and role within the Republic. The Force basically came from, uh, you know, distilling all of the uh, religious beliefs, spiritual beliefs, go all around the world, all through time, finding the similarities, and then creating a an easy to uh, deal with metaphor for what religion is. Firstly, their understanding of the world has similarities with the vision of Shaolin monks from China. These monks propose one unifying energy that is all-encompassing, inhabiting the entire universe and beyond. It surrounds us, it penetrates us, it binds the galaxy together. The samurai of Japan cast light on the Jedi rejection of material comforts as well as their militarism. They mastered many weapons which they wielded in battle as key members of the armies of Japan, just as the Jedi were field commanders of the armies of the Republic. Another parallel can be seen with the European Knights Templar. In Star Wars and History, Terence McMullen writes that the Templars were esteemed above other knights for their austerity, devotion and moral purity. Like the Jedi, the Templars practiced individual poverty within a military monastic order that commanded great material resources. A 12-member Council of Elders, led by a revered Grand Master, governed both the Templars and the Jedi. Even the clothes worn by both groups are similar, with the Jedi sporting the same hooded robes worn by Christian knights who took vows of poverty, chastity and obedience. In 1307, the King of France, Philip VI, all but annihilated the Templars in order to further his own power, employing inquisitors to track them down and torture them for their perceived sins. The similarities to the infamous Order 66 are clear, and ever since both the Jedi and the Templars lived in hiding. Execute Order 66. All of these inspirations combine to create a wholly unique society of warriors turned monks turned diplomats, which we know as the Jedi, and the synthesis of ancient Roman history with 20th century aesthetics, as well as a healthy dose of European and American imperialism, come together to form the Galactic Empire. And this is all given a sci-fi paint job, swapping chariots for spaceships or katanas for lightsabers. With Star Wars, it was, you know, the, the religion, the, everything was so um, taken and put into a form that was easy for everybody to accept so it didn't fall into a, a contemporary mode where you could argue about it. Uh, it went everywhere in the world. Of course, when writing Star Wars in the 70s, it's unlikely George Lucas headed to the library and flicked through pages upon pages of ancient history, codes of warrior monks and the aesthetic tendencies of fascist Germany. But as a self-confessed lover of history, it's impossible not to draw upon what you know when writing a story. Combine this with what was going on at the time, and its inevitable real-world inspirations find their way onto the page. Star Wars is set in a long time ago, in a galaxy far, far away. But if you look to history, it might not be as far as we think.